and providers, um, some of the student support initiatives that Study Cans has been undertaking during COVID-19 and how they've been supporting students who are here in the region. Um, and a little bit about the challenges and opportunities um, that are coming up for the Cairns region um, into the future. And then we're going to have some presentations, some short, sharp presentations from some of the key providers here. So we're going to hear from James Cook University, from TAFE, Central Queensland Uni. Um, Janine's going to give us an overview of the Vet and Elikos providers in the region and the schools. And then at the end, we've got, got an opportunity for questions and answers both from our offshore network and also from any providers who are on the call as well, um, if you'd like to ask questions of each other. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we kick off. Um, there is a, a Q&A function on the webinar. So if you do have a question as we're going along, uh, please feel free to type something into that function um, and we can certainly try and answer it. If we don't get to it during individual speakers, we can certainly uh, run through those questions at the end and make sure that we've covered off on any queries. Um, and we've got our first comment through. So thank you, it's from Michelle at Study Cairns. Welcome everyone. Thanks, Michelle. Welcome to you as well. So just to kick off, so, I know that many of you will be very familiar with Cairns, but just to give you an overview, currently in Cairns, um, as of 2019, there was about 2,700 international student enrolments. And of course, we know that there's also another big market in Cairns, which is the edu tourism or study tours market um, that are coming here on tourist visas. So whilst we have just over 2,500 enrolments, that certainly doesn't reflect the entire student population in Cairns. There are many more that are here on short-term visas to undertake study tours or, or short language courses. The local population is around 150,000 people at the moment, and the largest source markets of students for the Cairns region um, are Japan, South Korea, India, PNG, the Philippines, and Brazil. And just in terms of the economic impact that IET has on the Cairns region, it adds around 61 million in total value to the Cairns region each year. This is just a very uh, basic graph, just to give you an idea of the split of the subsectors of IET in Cairns. So as you can see from this, there's a very large vet market and Elicos, those two groups um, dominate the student market here, um, followed then by higher education and finally schools. And some of the key strengths, obviously the international airport based in Cairns um, is a really strong gateway into the northern um, parts of Queensland um, and makes access easier for students. Proximity to our Asian markets um, and just the natural um, attractions and strengths of Cairns. So home to two World Heritage areas, both the Great Barrier Reef and the Wet Tropics Rainforest. And of course, two of our Queensland universities uh, with campuses here in CQU and JCU. This map I've got up now is, I have to flag as a uh, pre-COVID <laughs> flight map for Cairns, uh, but it gives you a sense of the connections available directly into Cairns through the international airport, um, through Singapore, Indonesia, Japan, PNG, and out to New Zealand as well. And that's it from me in terms of a general overview. I'm now going to share the speaking responsibilities over to Janine from Study Cairns, and she's going to take you through exactly what's been happening on the ground here during COVID um, and what's happening with Study Cairns. So I'm going to pass over to you, Janine. Okay, so welcome everyone. Thanks so much for the introduction, Angela, and, and giving a synopsis on, on our market. Um, it's been a, a very different year for, for everyone involved with international education. Um, and we really appreciate everybody taking the time to, to be here with us today. I'm just gonna share a few slides with, with all of you. So um, Angela uh, shared a, a few facts about 
cans and I hope um, every one of you have been here at some point in time. Uh, I guess the main point I want to make from a, from a personal note is that I've lived in Victoria, New South Wales, the Gold Coast, and Cairns has all of the benefits of a city without the hustle and bustle, basically. People actually say hello to you as you walk down the street. It's got a true community spirit, uh, almost a country feel. But on the flip side, you can wine and dine at restaurants, um, which boast global cuisine. Uh, there are over 600 different tours available here. Um, and we offer, you know, world ranking uh, accommodation, which um, we're exceptionally, exceptionally proud of. So um, I, I do um, recommend when, when you're talking with international students or agents that they understand that we are a, a diverse city that offers a lot to um, the international market. Um, I think people think Cairns is, is regional and probably doesn't have the uh, opportunities that are maybe available in the larger cities, um, but there is a, a huge advantage uh, to being regional, aside from um, a few visa incentives, which I'm sure you're all aware of, um, you know, we're able to work with stakeholders and governments to create courses specific to the needs and capabilities of a tropical region. So. Um, we have a vast array of, of different education opportunities here and um, I urge all of you to, to ensure that you, you know, link with all of our members and make sure that you are up to date with those opportunities that we have available because um, we are a very unique region and location with accessibility uh, to other, other um, Pacific nations as well, which gives us a lot of opportunities, for, particularly in, um, in tropical uh, education. So um, prior to COVID-19, um, I think we're all having a nickname for that, um, like 9-11 has or pre-BC, <laughs> but um, we've got limited budgets in, in our organisation, but each year we discuss with our members and, and we collaboratively work out, uh, pull together our priority markets. So uh, some markets are stronger in different sectors, obviously. Um, and the priority markets, as you can see uh, at this present moment for us before COVID was uh, Japan, China, Taiwan, Papua New Guinea and, and the subcontinent. So while we prioritise um, these markets, um, as we can't travel at the moment, it's our main focus is actually going to move over to social media or ha already has moved over to social media. And we'll, because of that, I um, believe we'll be able to expand those markets that we're working in. So it won't need to necessarily spend, um, sit around our priority markets. So if you see your market not on here, please don't uh, disregard us because we are open to all opportunities. Um, and as I mentioned, there are various sectors in, in our industry and every sector has a, a strength in different um, markets and different opportunities. So, you know, even um, an example is yesterday, I was chatting with um, Olivia in the TIQ office and she wasn't aware of the opportunities that we potentially have in internship markets. So, um, you know, that's something that we, we need to consider that there's all different, a variety of different opportunities for, for everyone. So um, we've put together a couple of slides. I think it's really important for you to know that um, while um, we've all been going through this, we certainly have not been sleeping. Um, the team uh, put together an amazing strategy pre-COVID and we, you know, we, we worked hard on that and we've worked together with the local stakeholders in our region. So um, just a couple of the fantastic things that have happened in our region over the last uh, six to nine months is the investment with the CQ University Aviation Hub. Um, and if anyone hasn't seen that, I do urge you to get along and um, or, or connect, sorry, um, at the moment um, with um, CQU because it's a spectacular setup and stages two and three will be a combined investment of a further 45 million. So we're looking forward to those stages um, coming forward. JCU has just opened their ideas lab. Um, that was another $30 million investment and it's brilliant. Um, and I love, and, and I encourage um, everyone to, when, when the board is open, to come and have a, have a look. Um, $40 million partnership between uh, JCU and Cairns Catholic Education to open the Newman Catholic College, 
and that'll be um, opening in 2022. And I believe they already have a wait list, which is amazing. Um, the Cairns University Hospital is fantastic for us for international education, education, and for our health sector. So it's been a fantastic investment uh, into our region combined um, between um, James Cook University and, and government, and, and there is a number of other stakeholders involved with that as well. Um, and then they, there was a further Commonwealth supported placement um, contribution, um, which is for scholarships to the School of Medicine and Dentistry. Um, when we uh, started out the year um, as a group, we went down to, with Advanced Cans, we went to Brisbane, and these are a couple of other initiatives that have been put forward, uh, but are not finalised yet. And that is um, the University High School at Cairns State High, which is a combined initiative with CQU, and then CQU campus to be um, built in, in, in Cairns CBD. So watch the, those spaces. Um, I, I am very um, confident and hopeful that, well, <laughs> hope that they'll get through by the end of this year, those approvals. Um, uh, Great Barrier Reef Academy was established. So that's an online school that's been established during COVID-19. Uh, we had three international five-star hotels open in the last 12 months, which is brilliant for our international students on an employability level. Um, and then I'm so excited to say that we have put on two more um, people who are fantastic and we are going to introduce them later on and they will be heading up um, the industry development management and the employability projects for, for Study Can. So we haven't been sitting down, we've been working very hard and uh, we just need you guys to um, be involved with us and make sure you get uh, the stories out. Okay, so um, the Student Hub is three years old this uh, November, I believe, and it's been a brilliant asset to our organisation. Uh, it ensures the welfare and the employment opportunities of our, for our students. It offers a wide range of services, which are, are listed there. Um, and it, it is a key part of ensuring that we send the right message to our students, that they not, are not just about the dollar value to our region, but we actually sincerely care about them. Um, a couple of the programs that we run through the Student Hub, um, we have two different micro-credentialing programs that we offer students. So if we had more time, I could um, delve into that a lot more, but Tatiana is heading up our employability program now. So uh, I, we will share you everybody's contact details and you can contact her to find out some more information if you don't already have that. Um, uh, we've also um, uh, just recently with the new uh, Launch U program been able to connect with our Chamber of Commerce, which links us with an extra 700 businesses in Cairns to be able to um, engage our students in with, with the micro-credentialing. So that's very exciting for, for our region. Um, we are still um, operating our Ambassador Program, which is another hub in initiative. Um, this year, obviously, we had to take it online, which was um, brilliant. So we have a great team at the Hub, Gabby and Danny. Um, Gab Gabby um, spent three days learning how to um, create TV, basically, and um, she's been really utilising that through the Hub so well. So that's all, um, some of our ambassadors. So their role for us is to tell the world how much they love studying and living in Cairns, and they do a great job of doing that. And they post regular updates on social media, um, and they engage with uh, multicultural organisations that we have in Cairns and they help welcome new students into the region. So um, it's exciting to still have our ambassador program going under the, the study Queensland and study and the student hub initiatives. Okay, so um, a huge uh, impact of COVID-19 was our students' welfare. Uh, so, uh, as a team, we all brainstormed on how we could um, assist our students. So, we came up with the Cairns Cares Initiative. Um, it's so important for us to be able to look after our students. And, and we had close to 1,800 that were still in Cairns during COVID-19. Um, and so, you know, not all of them were at a... Um, a 
a problem state, sorry, um, but we needed to be able to um, ensure that we looked after those that were. So there were three initiatives. One was Hub Food, where we were able to feed our students and thanks to Study Queensland for providing some ongoing funding so that we could um, implement a, um, a, a proper store where they could come and get food and also um, meals for them on a regular basis. Then the Hub TV, which was a live stream TV show. Um, it, it was a way of giving them information, but also allowing them to remain connected with each other because it can be very lonely during that period of, of lockdown. Um, and then Hub Chat, which was people being able to come in from the community and chat with them so students could also keep up their, their English. So um, great initiative. Um, but just um, on this slide here, you'll be able to, we'll send this to you later and you'll be able to have a look at a few of the videos um, and, and then you'll be able to see some of the students' stories. But that's uh, some of the photos that we've taken during this time. Um, I, I'd like to share with you that um, we recently, we, we conducted a survey uh, to assess, you know, the current situation of where our students are at, uh, gauge their overall feelings. And I can share, share these statistics with you later as well, but um, we are able to ascertain that 73.1% of students would recommend studying in Cairns, 626 have returned to work, which is a great, great story. 91.8% were happy they were in Queensland during COVID-19, extremely proud of that statistic. And 79.6% said their study experience met or was better than expected. So a, a great, um, you know, a, a great showcase of what our hub is doing, what our team are doing, and um, I'm extremely proud of everything that they've they've achieved. So um, challenges and opportunities moving forward. Um, you know, obviously, right now our current um, challenges are, are COVID nineteen as our borders are closed. So. Um, the inquiry rate has increased though, and I'm really proud to say that's not just from, um, well, it's from down south a little bit as well, but um, it's predominantly um, from overseas. And a lot of those countries are from countries that perhaps are not seen as having can schools in as well. Um, but also, uh, you know, the stories are getting out there and people saying, well, you know, we're really um, keen to come to Cairns because of um, what we've talked about with our friends and um, we understand that, you know, there's some great opportunities there and that you care about the students and the international students are an important um, part of, of Cairns and, it's, and the region that we're in. So um, I think the other factor that's come out that students are now uh, looking for more, they're looking for a balance and Cairns can offer that balance. Um, they're taking into consideration the United Nations SDG. They're looking for something else. And we have two World Heritage regions here. So that further supports an, an opportunity for a student who's looking for that balance and, and something more and, and a way of being able to involve, be in, in an environment where they can give back and be connected with the, with the region. So Cairns is extremely well placed to offer these exceptional live abroad opportunities. Uh, I think also with the increase of infrastructure, um, watch this space. Cairns is forging ahead and combined with that reputation of Cairns Cares initiative, um, our still in residence international students speaking highly of our region. Um, I believe we're gonna see an increase in student numbers once the borders reopen. So that's my slides for the moment and I will hand it back over to Angela. Great, thanks Janine. Um, we're now going to move into some shorter presentations from some of the key providers in Cairns. So we've got a couple of five minute um, slots where you're gonna hear some of the highlights from those. And we'll kick off with James Cook University and welcome to Wendy Hampton. And Wendy's from the international team at JCU. Hi everybody, just um, give me one second to get my PowerPoint up and running and then I should be able to share my screen. I've been having some technology issues today, so please excuse me for one second. Okay, great. Yes, I apologise for my um, connection issues today. So uh, I'll try to keep to the time that we've been allocated and just give you a quick introduction to James Cook University. 
Uh, I know that I've had the pleasure of meeting some of the people on the line today. For those I haven't met, um, my name is Wendy Hampton. I'm the manager of the International Relations team. Uh, I, and I'm going to give you a general overview about JCU um, and with a particular focus, um, obviously, on our CAMS campus and our CAMS presence. So uh, for those who aren't overly familiar yet, uh, JCU is um, Queensland's second oldest university. We're celebrating our 50 year anniversary this year, which is exceptionally exciting for us. Uh, and we're a comprehensive research intensive university and a member of the uh, Innovative Research Universities of Australia group. In total, across all of our campuses, we have 21,500 students and about 4,500 staff. Um, just to give you a quick snapshot of some of the things we're best known for, um, we're in the top 2% of universities in the world. We've also had a recently announced um, number one for global partnerships for sustainable development, uh, which was um, something that we were very proud to get and will continue to work on. We're in the top 30 uh, of young universities in the world. That, that will be, this will be the last year that we are able to be part of that because of our 50th anniversary, uh, but we're looking forward to the next steps um, in our development as a university. Uh, we're quite well known for our research, as I mentioned earlier, uh, and world class or better in 38 areas of research and above world class in eight areas of research. Um, so we're number one in the world for marine and freshwater biology and number two in the world for biodiversity conservation. And we're pretty well known for the way that we support uh, international students, but students in general when they're studying with us. Uh, and the employment options for students afterwards. So uh, students who are able to go into full-time employment after graduation. Uh, to give you the campuses, uh, one in Cairns, then Brisbane, Townsville and Singapore. Uh, but to focus in on our Cairns campus, we have about 4,000 students on campus in Cairns uh, with about 12% international student population. Uh, I know some of you will be really familiar with uh, our campuses and our Cairns campus in particular. So uh, I've tried to bring in some new information for you today. Uh, I know that um, it was mentioned earlier that we've just opened our ideas lab uh, in August. So very, very recently uh, we don't actually have um, photographs of it that show it well yet. So uh, in the background, you can see um, the mock-up of what it looks like, but it's, it's up and running now and it's an incredibly exciting um, entrepreneur space. Um, we've also got our Australian Tropical Science and Innovation Precinct and a few new um, developments coming up on our Townsville campus too. So uh, this is just to give you a picture, I suppose, that JCU is certainly moving forward and are sitting, sitting around um, while uh, the, you know, some of the challenges of the current situation are occurring. Um, in terms of the way that we teach and the way that students learn with us, we're very well known for our experiential learning. So I've already mentioned, um, you know, the, the five stars for graduate employment from the Good Universities Guide, uh, but also just in terms of the way students interact with clin clinical placements, field trips, professional placements, um, internships while they're studying with us is something that um, we're very proud of and we continue to develop in that space. We have some new innovative programs embedded into some of our master's programs in particular at the moment that are specifically focused on employability. Um, they're four credit courses and uh, the, the outcomes um, so far only commenced this year are uh, looking really impressive. So I hope to have more to tell you about on those in the future. Um, we have our research stations, uh, which are really important to some of that experiential learning that I just mentioned. And the one closest to our Cairns campus is the Daintree Rainforest Observatory. Uh, I hope some of you have had the chance to visit, but if you haven't yet, please, um, when you do come to Cairns, make sure that you get a chance to go up to um, Daintree and, and see some of those facilities. Um, as well as the fact that the campuses themselves and Cairns campus in particular are surrounded um, by spectacular living laboratories, um, it, just by students being able to engage with those campus, um, campuses while they're studying. Uh, I've mentioned our student support and I won't go into this in detail, but the lifestyle available to students on campus in Cairns and in Townsville um, is that they can en engage with the local communities, um, their safe communities, there's a strong connection with the indigenous cultures of the region. Uh, so it's a, it's a wonderful experience for students. Uh, the campus is a little bit out of the city. So uh, we have um, some brand new accommodation on campus in Cairns, that's John Gray Hall that you can see there in front of you. 
um, self-catered, um, really designed for students who, who want comfortable living, convenient living, um, but the flexibility to be able to um, cook for themselves and, and be quite independent. Um, and we've got some new accommodation announced for Townsville as of yesterday. I think I kept to my five minutes. Uh, I hope, I apologise for the technical issues at the beginning, but I hope you feel free to contact me afterwards if you have further questions. Thanks, Wendy, and you were perfectly on your five minutes. So well done. Um, love when we keep the time. So um, I won't hold up uh, any longer. I will pass now over to Marty Locke, who is from TAFE Queensland, to talk to us a little bit about the TAFE offering in Cairns. All right, hello everyone. It's been a while since I've uh, presented, so please bear with me. Um, yes, so thank you for the uh, invite, Study Queensland and Angela, and also um, as part of the Study Cairns um, community as well. Uh, we recently, well actually it's a while ago now, last year, we won the uh, International Chain Provider of the Year, and uh, it's quite an achievement for us as a um, registered training organisation to be able to uh, showcase this award. And you'll probably see us showcase this for as much as we can during this uh, current climate. So <clears throat> one of the things that we um, are pretty proud of at TAFE Queensland, and it really sort of has helped us through these um, tough times has been the diversity of our nationalities. And uh, the map we have in, in front of you highlights where a majority of our students come and study in, in Queensland and where they come from. Um, for our Cairns region, we do get a strong uh, diversity of uh, students coming from Korea, the Philippines, Thailand. Um, we're starting to see a bit more coming from Colombia and China and Taiwan. And obviously Japan's been quite a long-term um, supporter to the region as well. One of the uh, interesting things that we, um, we always uh, like to highlight is that we are starting to see more um, students coming from, I guess, non-typical countries um, like Sweden and, and Iceland and Finland and Norway. Um, and we are starting to get some traction in the uh, sort of Spain, Italy and Germany um, areas as well. Why TAFE? Well, that's a very good question. We are the largest and most experienced training provider in Queensland. We've been um, cel um, training for over 135 years. And actually, I think this year we are celebrating our 138th birthday. Um, we are known for basically in our sector as being a practical industry relevant training provider. And obviously we provide a lot of different programs from entry level certificates, and we are starting to venture into the bachelor degrees, but we are leaving that predominantly for the university sector. as They are the experts in that, but we are sort of offering one or two um, degrees in, in sort of unique areas of study. The courses that are available for international students, they can study across a multiple of, of locations. And obviously Kansas is quite a desirable location for a majority of our international students. Um, across our network, there's probably about three and a half thousand international students from about 90 different countries in total. Um, a lot of our students, they do look for different opportunities while they're considering Queensland for their education destination. And we like to encourage students to utilize pathways and we do partner with a lot of local institutions, whether it be from our high schools, and we are um, do encourage students from the uh, secondary schools to consider coming through TAFE. Um, we also work with a number of Alicos providers across the state, and we um, significantly work with a lot of the university providers, especially James Cook University and CQ University that are with us here today. Um, basically, what we like to promote is it gives you the best of both worlds, combining practical training with a prestigious university degree. Um, I'll show you shortly, keep my, within my time limit, the state-of-the-art facilities. I've got a quick little two-minute video to highlight what you can see on our CAMS campus and highlighting the, basically the practical elements that our students are going to be engaged. We are all about the student experience and within my role, we are very focused on making sure that their students are supported. And obviously in a time like now with COVID, we have been supporting uh, a lot of our students through food drives, through the hub support, through uh, welfare arrangements, and also looking at sort of employability and financial um, support where possible. 
some of the programs we offer in the region, hospitality, cookery and tourism, always see quite a, um, a key key um, area of study in the region. Nursing is also um, of, of great um, demand as well as beauty therapy. We are seeing a steady increase in the early childhood education and care. Obviously business and leadership is quite a nice stable qualification that we offer up there. We are venturing a lot more into the information and networking space and uh, cyber security is obviously a key feature across all the tapes around the, um, the country and we are quite lucky to be offering uh, one or two qualifications um, as we speak. Horticulture is obviously um, quite unique in the region as well. We focus on the subtropical um, uh, terrain where in some of our other locations there will be different uh, horticultural focus. Um, and I'll just put in there some of the other programs, but they are available in other regions, uh, unfortunately not available in the Cairns region at this point in time, but that may change as demand changes as well. And that's usually around the sports and fitness and the trade courses, uh, specifically automotive engineering and uh, carpentry. One of the key things that is also quite unique um, that we're sort of venturing out on, and um, some people go, how do you do this with cookery? But virtual classes, and we've actually just done a master class in cookery with um, a Korean high school, and thanks to our uh, the, the TIQ Korean office for supporting us in that. Um, but from next semester, we are looking at delivering some of our classes with a virtual delivery uh, component so that the teachers are going to be there, they're going to be engaged with the rest of the students um, and these are for the students who are still offshore with a view that when the borders resume and we can all um, travel to some degree you then will continue with our face-to-face -face mode from there. Um, look if there's any questions there's our contact details and I will sign off but thank you very much for listening to what Tape Queensland can offer you and hopefully we can make more students be future ready. Thank you Angela. Thanks, Marty. Much appreciated. Um, the last uh, major provider that we're going to hear from is Central Queensland University, and um, I'll welcome Jody Dugnan George, who's going to present about uh, CQU Cairns. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for the opportunity to present today. Um, okay, um, so uh, as uh, Angela mentioned, my name is Jody Dugnan George, and I'm the Associate Vice President of CQ University Cairns campus. Um, uh, you know, we are a university that's in the top 2% for international students. Um, just a bit of a visual and just to give, us, give you an idea of us in numbers. So we're actually one of the largest uni uni Australian universities by footprint. We have uh, 20 plus locations um, around Australia. We're pretty much in every mainland state across Australia. Uh, we have uh, about, uh, also we're, we're also Queensland's only dual sector university and, and uh, for those who are unfamiliar with that term, basically means we are both um, a, a vet provider and a university, so we can offer anything from uh, uh, certificates through to, to PhDs and above. Uh, so uh, we have about um, 3,600 students um, uh, and that's holding. Our domestic market has done well, but obviously our 9,000 international students was pre-COVID um, and uh, basically representation from about 800, uh, sorry, 85 countries. Uh, we have 50,000 international alumni. Um, we invest heavily in, in scholarships annually, about 24 million annually. We have uh, 30, uh, 350 plus partner networks around the world. Um, and uh, we've uh, put some significant investment into our campuses uh, uh, this year, 257 million. Um, now just about us in terms of some, some rankings. So uh, according to the Good University Guide, we have been awarded um, five stars in, in six categories. Um, uh, the first one is, is starting salary. So we are number two in Australia for postgraduate starting salary and number five in Australia for, um, for undergraduate starting salary. Uh, number three for full-time employment, um, number 10 for student support and number eight for skills development. Um, in terms of the international barometer, we're pleased to say that we um, have above uh, sector average results for um, uh, student experience. So 94% uh, um, of students were either satisfied or very satisfied with the arrival experience, 92 for the support that they received while here, 91% for their learning experience, 
and 90% uh, uh, were uh, satisfied or, or very satisfied with their overall living experience. So um, uh, why us? So uh, the Sikhi uh, University advantage is uh, you know, we, we're all about quality education for everyone. Um, we offer affordable fees, scholarships, internships and emplacements are so pretty much bedded in, in, in most of what we do. Um, we have multiple pathways, as I mentioned before, we are a dual sector university. Um, student support is something we pride ourselves in. Um, one of the interesting things about the, our university is we're a three term university. So there are three um, uh, um, terms or, or opportunities to study throughout a year to help uh, fast track your degree. Um, we also have um, online study, study and hyper flexible study intakes. Um, we are uh, world-class researchers to boot, and we have three offshore offices, um, one in China, uh, one in India, and, um, and Indonesia. So let's bring it local. So a little bit about us in Cairns. So um, as everybody knows, Cairns is the gateway to the Daintree, to Cranda, Port Douglas, um, basically some amazing world heritage uh, sites. Uh, we actually have uh, four locations within very close proximity to the CBD. So we started, um, we opened our current campus, uh, which is our main campus, right in the heart of the CBD uh, back in 2015. Now, we are located about 30 metres from the lagoon. Um, and I think we, we saw some of the lagoon images from uh, Marty's uh, video. Um, but we also have um, a, a, an airport campus now as well. So that's located right next door to the domestic terminal. Um, you can't miss it, there's big uh, lime green signage. Uh, so uh, we invested uh, in that and opened that um, last year. Um, uh, for, um, that was, so that stage one uh, of, of our Asia Pacific Avi Aviation Hub. Um, we're now just in the process of looking for some funding for stage two and, and stage three. We also have um, uh, additional labs um, uh, out in the more industrial part of the city um, to support our engineering. And we also have um, a sports science centre that's co-located with um, uh, our NBL National Basketball League team, the Cairns Taipans, of which uh, CQ are the naming rights sponsors. So we offer that degree in, um, uh, in, in partnership with, with the Cairns Taipans. Um, currently, we have over 2,000 students studying in Cairns. Um, uh, our international students only make up a small portion of that at, um, at this stage, um, but we are growing significantly. Um, we've also got some uh, quite interesting features on the campus. We have some quite significant um, digital media studios and recording studios, um, which are not just to support our degree, um, but uh, uh, we're also encouraging students to, um, uh, to learn more about those digital mediums since it's basically such a big part of, of everybody's life these, these days. Uh, so in terms of programs offered, so public health and, um, and nursing. So we are uh, in top 800 in preclinical uh, clinical health, uh, according to Times Higher Education World University Rankings 2020. Um, so in the nursing space, we uh, offer the graduate certificate in nursing. So it's basically an international registered nurse entry um, for uh, sorry, the Australian qualifications. And we also offer the Master of Public Health, which is, has, has some very interesting uh, in, in the industry engagement um, components to that degree. Um, we're also um, a remarkable excellence for research in Australia 2018 and 19, and the results were above world standard in public health and health services, and at world standard in medical and health sciences. Uh, engineering and aviation. Um, so the engineering, uh, Engineers Australia accredited with strong partnerships and links with industry. Uh, we're ranked number one in Australia for postgraduate engineering starting salary. Um, top 400 in engineering and technology, according to the uh, Times Higher Education World Ranking. Uh, remarkable excellence in research in Australia, 2018 and 19 results put us at uh, well above uh, world standard in mathematical sciences and applied mathematics, also in electrical and mechanical engineering. 
uh, and also above uh, world standard in, in engineering. Uh, we have a 48 week paid placement uh, in the Bachelor of Engineering and Diploma of Professional Practice. Um, we have uh, also uh, a dedicated um, off-site, uh, actually I'll build that and tick that, sorry, that one little sentence uh, slipped in, in the wrong slide. Um, and we have majors in civil, uh, electrical and mechanical um, and uh, mechatronics and resource systems. Okay. Uh, the Aviation, um, Asia, Asia Pacific Aviation Hub, which I mentioned before, is located. So that's uh, a picture uh, you can see of it. Uh, so if you just look to, as you're coming into the domestic airport, you look to the right and you'll actually see our, our um, centre there. Um, now, we, this degree is actually um, uh, in partnership with an airline. So Hinterland Aviation provide the flight training for our students. Um, and uh, with the idea that our students will then go on to fly with them. We also have an ongoing partnership with, um, uh, with, with Virgin as well. Um, the flight, in, uh, we also have uh, a, a new simulator, which is um, uh, we, we get a lot of traction with, with uh, a lot of the students wanting to come in and, 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 um, and have a play. Um, and the Asia aviation students um, uh, can also be eligible to take part in an exchange program with uh, the Korea Aerospace University. Uh, information systems and technology, um, national and international recognition by Australia Computers, Australian Computer Society. Uh, we're five stars in undergraduate computing and information systems for skills development and, and teaching quality. Five stars in postgraduate computing and information systems for learner engagement, skills development, student support and overall experience. Um, our majors include application development, business analysis, network security, mobile application development, software design and development. Um, uh, internships in, in the Bachelor of uh, Information Technology are in existence and uh, excellence for research in Australia 2018 and 19 uh, at world standard in information and computing sciences and artificial intelligence and image processing. Sorry, Jody, it's just Angela here. I just thought I'd let you know we've, we're just running a little over time at the moment. If we could um, have maybe one or two more minutes and then we'll, we'll just need to pass on to the next speaker. Yep, no problem at all. So pretty much um, uh, the last slides, it's just a, this just gives you an idea at a glance of our support services. Um, and uh, just in terms of uh, social innovation, we're Australia's only accredited change maker campus through the Asho uh, Ashoka U International Network of Change Maker Campuses. Um, uh, just a little bit of information about our scholarships. A uh, little bit of information about our research. Um, basically, uh, 22 different uh, categories um, of research in the last era rankings. Um, and final slide, just uh, about connecting with us. So thank you very much for the opportunity to present. Um, and I will stop sharing and hand back over to you, Angela. Thanks, Jody. And just a just a reminder, everyone, we will have those slides available um, afterwards as well. So um, I know there was quite a bit of content there that people can read through afterwards to um, have a look a bit more at the detail. So thanks, Jody. Um, it's now time to go to the final session um, of this webinar, um, and I'm going to hand back over to Janine from Study Cairns. She's going to talk a little bit about uh, VET and ELICOS in the region and then finally the school sector as well. There's just quite a few providers in those um, three sectors. So rather than have everyone try and do a, a quick presentation, uh, we've got Janine to present a holistic view of what's happening in the region and be able to share some slides that have some more detail for you afterwards as well. Thank you, Angela. So I have um, approximately 13 slides here, so I, I won't go through all, all of the details. Um, we have in Cairns um, a, a vast array of vocational providers. Um, obviously, you've already um, seen uh, TAFE's presentation, um, but we have a lot of other providers. So CCEB is one of those, and I'll just go through a, a few of them for you. They also provide 
English language and study tours and home stays. So a, a variety of, um, a one-stop shop they, they are. So they um, provide a variety of programs and courses. And they have also um, been online during this period to ensure that they can provide education for the students that were still here. And as Angela mentioned, all of these will be passed on to you later on. Um, EIM International is another one of our vocational colleges that we have in Cairns, providing um, child care diplomas and, um, and a couple of others there that have been mentioned. Um, we have, they are not the only ones that we have, but they were the ones that were sent through to, to us to provide to you today. Um, but we have a full list of them up on our website. Um, we have um, got some information here about uh, IDP and, and IELTS. And uh, I think it's a true commitment to international education in Cairns that they are, um, are in Cairns and they have actually just recently launched um, computer delivered IELTS. Um, so that's fantastic for, for the students and um, we'll be um, learning a lot more about that soon, but you'll be able to contact them if you, if you need further information, but that's a great opportunity for the students that we've got here. Uh, another one of our schools is the uh, vocational schools is our International College of Queensland. Um, a lot of our colleges here who are providing vocational education opportunities um, actually provide uh, their, the student services out to the local community. Um, so I know the team and I um, regularly try and visit TAFE or, or the International College of Queensland for a um, bit of an eyebrow wax or look after the legs, et cetera, for a cheaper rate and all the students um, take care of us. So it's a really great service to the, the community as well. Um, just back on vocational education, though, before I move on to the school providers, um, I think it's um, really important to be up to date at the moment with uh, the different visa um, initiatives. And the government has approved um, on some, in some sectors um, a relaxation of the traditional requirements for face-to-face -face teaching. So um, if you need any information from any of our team, could you please um, let us know? So we're happy to... to introduce you or let you know about all, all of the um, changes. Um, but it is um, looking positive for our vocational providers as well, because it's really necessary that we do have those opportunities to provide online ed education, not just face-to-face -face during these times. So our school providers, uh, we have several um, yeah, private schools uh, in, in Cairns, as well as um, our public schools through Education Queensland International. So there are nine uh, schools that are currently CRICOS registered under EQI um, and a lot more that actually offer study tour um, programs as well, as long as it's partnered with a, um, a homestay provider. So that's some of our schools that are listed there for you. Um, Peace Lutheran College is another uh, CRICOS registered high school, private high school in Cairns. And Trinity and I'll, I'll go back to Peace for a moment. Sorry. So Peace, um, I do want to mention that while they're a co-educational day school, they're also a boarding school. So that's a great opportunity for our international students. Um, a lot of um, opportunity there for, for people who aren't able to come and move here or don't want to have their children in, in, in a homestay, they can actually get them in, enrolled at this school and they can um, board there. It's a terrific school. I've just uh, recently found a, a familiar there and um, I urge you all to be in touch with them and um, they are setting up currently a virtual familiar program so that you can see within the rooms and the school um, campus. And TAS, um, TAS is one of our leading private institutions in Cairns. They have two campuses and um, obviously CRICOS registered and they um, are very keen to um, encourage more students to enrol there. At the moment, we have um, um, my own business has partnered with them to also provide uh, a lot of online opportunities. So if you need any further information, we're happy to, to share that with you. So in Cairns, um, under our Study Cairns membership, it's, it is uh, 
all about education and about our wonderful um, institutions. And, and as you've heard today, some of those institutions that we're, we are really, um, you know, in a, in a very high ranking and it's very, um, it's great for our region, but it's also, I'm really proud to be representing this organisation when we have such a calibre, high calibre of institutions. We also have had some major investment in the student accommodation and other services. So uh, we are aware of um, JCU um, John Gray Hall, which was introduced to us by Wendy before. But aside from the John Gray Hall, we have a further 800 plus rooms um, made up of the, the following um, organisations. So Cairns Kanga Rooms, uh, which were only built last year, very modern uh, and have really taken into consideration the students' needs. They were purposely built for students. Um, Can Share House, which has been um, around for a very long time and has a, a great relationship with the international students. Um, not purposely built for them, but they have gone and looked for accommodation that is suitable and um, it's a very affordable way for the students to be able to, to live here. Um, so there's some more details there and you can contact us if you need any further information. My Haven um, has recently built um, three locations. So combined with all of these um, properties, there's been a $15 million investment in student accommodation in our region. So we are um, exceptionally committed to international education here and, and making sure that not just the student education experience is important but also their living experience because we all know if they uh, they might have a top education but if their living experience is not up to par then they're not going to be happy at the end so it, it comes hand in hand so these are uh, these are purpose-built accommodation again um, and as you can see very modern very beautiful and um, and and I've often said maybe I should just sell my house and go and live with the students Terrific accommodation. Can Student Lodge is out by James Cook University. Um, this accommodation has been around for a while as well. Um, very well established and very um, well connected with their international students. Um, they offer all inclusive meals, which for, the, those, for some students who um, are not uh, particularly uh, great at cooking, it's a really great option for them. Um, really close to the campus. Uh, it's got a bit of a tropical feel to it and they create a lot of um, a bit of a family feel actually we create a lot of activities for the for the students so another terrific accommodation place um, all right so we're going to finish up on uh, actually this is is my business but I just did want to mention um, that you know we talked about the value of um, education to our region through student visas, but I don't want you to forget that there's a further 27 odd thousand students that come here for short term programs uh, and, and a lot of study study tours. So that brings an extra 40 odd million to our region. So it is um, a very significant part of our sector. Uh, and so um, um, Fenora International is also a one stop shop and you can contact us uh, for any further information. So. Finally, I would like to introduce you to our team. So we um, have a board, a, a, um, a board of 10 members, um, but what makes our place click, the people who work so hard for our group, for our membership uh, are listed here. So um, Gabby heads up the student hub and Danny is her assistant. And as you can see by the Cairns Cares Initiative, they've done a brilliant job over the last few months, but they've been there for a, couple, a few years now and they've always done a brilliant job. So um, I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to both of them. Um, up in the right hand corner, we have Michelle Beshman, who's always in touch with all of you, represents us at um, various global conferences and is uh, my right arm uh, without a doubt. And she is exceptional, always professional, always gorgeous and, um, and, and and always willing to help everybody. So that's been our team. And now our two new members, Tatiana and Jane are in the middle there. So we welcome them to our, our team. Um, Jane's going to have a very um, difficult job trying to pour uh, what's in our, all of the board members' heads uh, into um, one strategy. 
and, and move that forward. And so um, we welcome her on board and Tatiana is going to be running our employability program. So we're excited to have such a fabulous team. Um, Study Cans is open and ready for business and we really want you to remember that and connect with us. And if you've got any initiatives, any proposals out of the square, we love them, bring them on, come and speak to us and let us see what we can do together. Because we need to get this place really cranking and we need to get international education back on the map. And that's it for me. Thanks guys. Thanks so much, Janine, and thanks for being able to cover that such a range of different providers and services there at the end. <laughs> a very good knowledge. Um, that concludes the formal part of the presentation for today. Thank you everyone for joining us and listening in. We look forward to sharing all these slides and content with you over the coming days.